today, it's a great honor to chat with the legendary Paul Wong on the podcast. Dr. Wong is Professor Emeritus of Trent University. He is a fellow of APA and CPA and president of the International Network on Personal Meaning and the Meaning Centered Counseling Institute, Inc., editor of the International Journal of Existential Positive Psychology. He has also edited two influential volumes on the human quest for meaning. A prolific writer, he is one of the most cited existential and positive psychologists. The originator of meaning therapy and international meaning conferences, he has been invited to give keynotes and meaning therapy workshops worldwide. Dr. Wong is the recipient of the Carl Rogers Award from the Society for Humanistic Psychology. Dr. Wong, what an honor it is to chat with you today. Me too. Where should we even begin? You know, I'll tell you, I was looking through all of your papers going all the way back, uh, trying to trace the development of your research and thinking, um, going all the way back to your work with rats. <laughs> wow. In the 70s. In the yeah. 70s. The yeah. effect of food deprivation and imprinting on the behavior of young domestic chicks. I think that might have been one of your first papers. 1971. <laughs> well, no, no, my, my, uh, my foothill before that, that was... Wow. 60s? Rats. Yeah, I worked with rats first. Wow. Uh, so actually, all my research had the same theme. The same theme. The theme is, how can animals or human beings survive and thrive in deprivation, in adverse conditions. So that would be my theme. That's, that's why I call myself a, a, a central part of psychologist, because life is hard. Mm. Life is hard for all animals, survival of the fishes. <laughs> you are now strong, you got eaten. <laughs> you either eat or be eaten. <laughs> so that has been my my, my question is, you know, how can we, how can we survive and thrive in the face of threat, obstacles, danger? So that is not just a philosophical question because when I was born, Japanese, Japan invaded China. You know, we, we grew up with uh, with a window tape with paper strips, mm. so they would not be shattered. And we, 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 at night, we use a little oil lantern, cannot turn on the light. When we were four years old, uh, to Japan with Japanese soldiers with guns came to a house, wanted to take over the house. So what, we can all move out. So I was shipped to, all the children were shipped to different families so I was shipped to a, a remote relative. So they put me in the basement full of lights and darkness. And I, I was spent nice there, you know, with, with my whole body beaten by, by, by bugs. And so therefore, you know, I, and then we escaped to Hong Kong as refugee. So that's why I say, well, there's a lot of positive psychology talk about life in your true and positive territories, I did not mean because most of my life is in negative territory. Hmm. Mm. What, <laughs> so where were you born? Wait, let's back up a second. Where were you born and what year? 1937 in Tianjin. Wow, 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 wow. And so where did you, um, where did you go to college? Uh, I went to... I went to a college in Carleton University. Okay. Okay. I came to Canada to study. At yeah. Calgary. At Calgary. Yeah. yeah. Carleton, Carleton University. Oh, okay. Cal in, in Canada. Uh, in, in, in Ottawa, yeah. And then you have P for my PhD. Yeah. Okay. And then wait, at what point did you get interested in psychology? I would, you know, I would, obviously, in psychology, when I was a little kid, you know, I, I, went, I always wondered why people do things that way. Why people say that? You know, when I was eight years old, I was worried about you know, what happened to me if my parents died. I was young, who looked after me. 
And what happened? Well, I died. So I was wrestling with with each of death when I was eight or nine years old. Wow. Wow. So I, I was born a, a sad philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were were you were you interested in the existential philosophers? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, then my I read all the you know, in my teens, I read all the same books. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, it's what's really interesting about you is that you really, you predate the field of positive psychology by quite a bit. I mean, you were, I was looking back, you, you, you came up with a well, the perceived well-being scale in 1984, the year Michael Jackson won the Grammy. <laughs> I, won, won, I think one of his first Grammys. Tell me about that. Oh, I did a long story with uh, with me and the and the and the and Marty. Okay, we actually started about the same time. See, when he was doing research on helplessness, right. I was right. doing research both with with animals. I was doing research with learned optimism, yeah, learned yeah. courage. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah. So I wrote to him, I say, hey, Marty, I say, I, I don't think that animals can become helpless so readily because if they become helpless after some exposure to non contingent plantation, they will not have survived. I say, your animal, your dog, have already been reduced to the helpless state to incarceration. I said, I bet you anything, those street dogs, they will not be so easily reduced to helplessness. Hmm. So later on, this will show that that's right. Okay? A wild dog will not be become helpless so soon. And also, I, I, I say that uh, we're human beings, as opposed to, uh, I feel, non contingent Reinforcement become helpless. What a silly! Nobody can graduate with, you know, to become helpless. That is an artifact. So I do the same experiment by asking them. My, my subject will say, "I'm not helpless. I'm just you know, silly to waste my time." I know this whole thing's rigged. So, so they interpret that as helplessness. And so I, uh, our research, you know. With animals, with human, to prove that Matt is wrong, and uh, his his partner, Sig Mayer, agreed with me. Amazing. Sig, Wait, Sig, you, Sig, this was so you contacted Marty in the eighties. In in the sixties. Well, and you said was, you, you said email, so I, I don't think email existed then. But you wrote him letters. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I was yeah. doing. Yeah. So. Uh, Sid Mayer liked my work, see. Who did? Steve Mayer. Yeah, Steve, Steve. Mayer. Yeah, Marty's uh, collaborator, main collaborator on the uh, yeah, helplessness also, studies. Wow. Yeah, he's, a, he's a teacher of uh, of uh, Chris Chris Peterson. Yes, yes. Of course. So Mayer, Mayer became my good friend. So he was serving on the, on the National Institute of Mental uh, uh, IMH. Committee. So when he finished his term, he recommended me to take over. Uh, and I am a bio, bio, biological behavioral science panel. Okay? So, and also he came to my con uh, conference where I met your man, where I met your mentor, uh, uh, Robert Sternberg. Uh, no, yeah. 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 What year uh, was but, that? What year was that conference? That was uh, way back. No, that was. Uh, but anyway, so Steve Mayer came to my conference, came to my symposium on, on, on helplessness, uh, doing interpretation of helplessness. But anyway, so because I do not agree with Marty, so, well, people disagree because we are doing findings, right? So for some reason, it got married with me. <laughs> I don't know what. He what? Say it again? He got mad with me. He, he got mad with. He got mad at you for for doing what exactly? Because we're questioning his death. But then he ended up creating a whole field based on. Uh -huh. it. But then he created a whole field based on it. Yes, yeah, I started. 
the, my animal research, that, you know, I, I actually talked to Skinner. I said, you talked to B.F. Skinner? Yeah, I talked to Skinner, yeah. I actually, uh, Chris Monument's came and had lunch with him. So I said, I said, I talked to Skinner, I said, I said, Skinner, you, you, you guys, you, our pre conditioning is, it's the first level, the higher level of air conditioning. Uh, open conditioning because animals can learn rules that go from the first level. So I, I took the data. He agreed with me, but he died later on. Wow. Uh, so so it, uh, this might be in terms of own creativity. So I want to teach rats rules. Now, one rule is the creativity. You know, was I, I invented a two bar skin box. So they got reinforcement only when they learn to alternate left, right, left, right. They can actually press my bar. They have to alternate. They learn the rule of alternation. They got reinforced only when they press two here, two left. I can make that. I can teach the right how to count either. Also, uh, this is interesting thing. So I do a, 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 a REM sleep rat, with rat, okay, with uh, uh, Carla Smith. He's a s sleep uh, researcher. This is very interesting, okay. Why you teach animals simple learning, uh, their REM sleep, you know, we know that, okay. But for teach animal creativity, it's a different game. Because some rats can never learn. They're, they're stupid rats. <laughs> <laughs> some rats will never learn. Wow. That's amazing. Well, I wonder if that's the case with humans as well. No, not clear too. They don't alternate. You know, they fix it on one, one bar. Right? Yeah. They have one to switch bar and to get reinforcement. So usually you know, we find that the, the, the few animals who are able to learn, they show a Huge ram sleep. Before the next day, they got it. Eh? The rest do not show that. Show the huge, huge jump in ram sleep, never learn. So it's somehow that their brain, that little rat brain, like, wow, wow, how did you see inside? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah. There's a rule there, so they're able to learn a higher order thing. I see. I yeah, see. I also able to teach animals to learn press and bar that can increase the efficiency of reinforcement out of bar. So higher order. The skin I never got to study that. That's amazing. When did you do those studies? Was that early uh, on in your career? Uh, that that was in the in the sixty in the late sixties. Wow! Wow! And and also I also challenged a rotter. <laughs> I challenge everybody. The locus <laughs> of control guy? The locus of control guy? <laughs> wow. I said, Roger, you're all wrong. It's how so. <laughs> <laughs> you really stir the pot there, Dr. Wong. <laughs> I said, you're all wrong. I said that you force people to choose internal external. No, the world doesn't operate that way, I say. I say Chinese guys are both internal and external at the same time. See, we work hard internal, but we give credit to our teachers, to our parents. Oh, I'm able to succeed because my t teacher is very good. And my parents support my study. So we're able to, to, to do, so that's why they understand why Chinese people didn't know how to figure it out, how to, they, they cannot measure it. They cannot measure the true picture. You can afford them to choose either one. So I develop internal external as two independent dimensions. So lo and behold, Chinese guys are both high in internal and external dimension. So I said that should be applied to all research that most variables are not, are not uh, Two values on the same dimension, you know, bipolar. Right. Right. They're, they're too, too independent. 
dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that is so that can change change the whole field of measurement. You have to find your two independent dimensions, then you have a lot more space, creativity, a lot for maximum cognitive flexibility. Right? Sure. Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, later on, later on, after me, uh, uh, the guy in, in, in uh, Michigan with the, with the Chinese professor Pan, P-U-N-G, they say all oh, Chinese people are more flexible cognitively. They see things as, uh, as uh, you know, differently. I found that a long time ago. If they never... Still, I'm in Canada, nobody pay attention to my research. So that's why you invited me as well. Wow, that's an opportunity for me to share my ideas. Yeah. Because people don't take Canada seriously. They don't? Um, they, don't they, don't take, they don't take Canada serious. Because everything in America, right? I do. My best friend lives in Canada. Oh, then you're different. That's why you 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 invited me. That's why I'm grateful to you, right? <laughs> okay. There's a lot a lot going on here right now. A lot a lot that you're talking about. My my, my but I'm doing everything. Trying to find out what's going on. See? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, so my my thinking is different from people in the West because my training is different, right? Yeah. In, in Chinese, you know, when I was a kid, my parents told taught teachers, taught, taught me, you got to work hard. Right? You got to work hard. The top people work the hardest. Okay? Yeah. Uh, there's a Chinese saying that uh, you will do uh, until suffering in young age, you never should see in life. So that idea ingrained in my mind. You do work and do suffering and do work hard. You never amount to anything. Mm. So that's why when I see that not not the American young people want to easy life, they can easy they can success easily without sacrifice, without suffering. You know, I say, well, that's not real life. So now pandemic, people can realize now. It, it, life is difficult with pandemic, with lockdown. People got people got uh, uh, unemployed, bankrupt, uh, got sick. So now they have those to re- re- of reality. The life is hard. So I say life is hard. Do you know that those positive psychologists say I'm unscientific. I'm too pessimistic. I got criticized for years by policy Hey everyone, I'm excited to announce that the eight-week online Transcend course is back. This iteration of the course, which will run from September 5th to October 24th of this year, will use science to help you live a more fulfilling, meaningful, creative, and self-actualized life. There will be limited slots available, so save your spot as soon as possible. In addition to the regular class pricing, we're also offering limited slots for personal self-actualization coaching. Save your spot today by going to transcendcourse.com. That's transcendcourse.com. The Transcend Course is just one of the offerings of the brand new Center for the Science of Human Potential. The Center for the Science of Human Potential's mission is to use science to help each person fulfill their highest potential and contribute to the good of society. Toward that goal, we offer classes, coaching, and consulting opportunities to help people apply the latest science to help themselves, their organizations, their schools, their families, and their communities to be more creative, loving, and full of transcendent possibilities. For more on the center, you can go to scienceofhumanpotential.com. Hey everyone, doing this podcast for y'all is one of my greatest privileges, but the cost of maintaining a professional production like this one really adds up. I'm grateful to today's sponsors who help fund the show, but if you'd prefer a completely ad-free experience, you can join us at patreon.com slash psychpodcast. You'll get completely ad-free episodes all while directly supporting the show for as little as $5 a month. That's patreon.com slash psych podcast. Well, this is why you're an existential positive psychologist. You, I think you may be the only existential positive psychologist on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> the existential people hate positive psychology. They, they're mad. 
imagine. I know, I know, it's ridiculous. I've been trying to unite all these all these different factions, and I mean, why not just call yourself a humanistic, an existential humanistic psychologist? That's what I. That's what I am. I'm just curious. Yeah. It turns out easy. So you are, you are amazing because you call yourself human psychologist, and yet the part of psychology people embrace you. But the rest of human psychology, they part of psychology don't have nothing to do with them. It's a shame. It's a real shame. I've yeah. been trying to change that. Yeah. Because yeah. Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Schneider. Yes, I love Kirk Schneider. I, Kirk Schneider and I trying to set up a special issue of of uh, American psychologists and have a dialogue with uh, Marty and Jonathan Hay. Mm-hmm. And so, and mm-hmm. it, it never come to fruition. They, they, oh. they will not. So it'd be nice to have a dialogue. They don't believe in dialogue. I, I don't know why. Well, I Jonathan Haidt definitely believes in di- dialogue. It's his whole thing. Agree. Yeah, yeah great, but it, but anyways, it never come to fruition. Okay? That's a shame. Yeah. yeah. So uh, even now, I, I write to parapsychology people like the, the, this girl of uh, a Greek, uh, 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 what's this guy, uh, Duckworth, uh, the Chinese Ange- woman. A- Angela Duckworth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I told her I said, you're Chinese. Chinese people don't think about that great like that. You know, that, that you, you, you can pay. Your courage, how can you have true groups of courage? It's just passion and persistence. With a conviction, well, courage, you don't. I mean, the, the basic thing is moral fortitude. Moral fortitude. Oh. And the, the moral fortitude to do the right thing. And also, briefly, you know what? I'm willing to put my life on the line. I'm able to risk my life. It's not just persistent, but sacrifice. So you, you miss out the courage part. You miss out uh, the faith to believe in something. She don't, re- she don't reply. I least could have good to say to I'm, taught, I'm older than you. You could you, 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 my, my daughter. I could taught you something, right? Her, her students talk to me. That was nice. That was nice. Uh, but she never replied me. I was just not, did not good researcher. Well, she's very busy. She's a very busy human. And well, maybe it wasn't personal. And for the science, for the science, for the sake of science, you another senior researcher or, or whatever, discuss with you on, on a matter of, that you're passionate about. At least you should discuss. But, but, he, he ignored me. He, he, I wrote her so two or three times. Sorry, who was that? Who are you talking about? Uh, uh, Angela uh, Oh, I'm sorry. You said he, so I was confused. Do you mean she? Yeah. She. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she. Um, it's okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I hear I hear your uh, frustration. Um, I hear that you are frustrated. In 2020, you wrote an article called "The Unheard Cry of a Successful Asian Psychologist." That was the title of your article. What is what is the unheard cry exactly? If you could, uh, if I give you the microphone right now. What is what exactly is it? Is that so? Not only people do not want. I mean. The real, real famous people like Skinner and uh, uh, they will talk to me. But, but, but for some reason, the, the part of psychology people, that this, this uh, tribal mentality, this, yeah, they do want to talk to people who, who question the, their, their simplicity, okay? So do not talk to me, okay? And I got criticized. It, it, one time, I, I applied for a grant for, for Templeton uh, for my, my conference. Mm. One reviewer who is particular said that suffering has nothing to do with psychology. Reject my grant. Oh, that's a, that's what's unfortunate. A, uh, but I, I fought back. I said, suffering has nothing to do with psychology. <laughs> Suffering is the basis of our psychology. So I won the case, I got my money, okay? But I'm saying that at every turn, I got this, this 
party colored people slap me and my dad reject me laughing, right? Consid continuing every every step of the way, they are rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. Well, let's um, let's talk about your research because let, let's let's focus on the positive. Let's not focus on your suffering. No, I'm joking. That was that was a joke. <laughs> but let's 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 talk a little bit about you know what's awesome about your research. Um, you you tried to create something called PP 2.0, um, mm-hmm. Positive Psychology 2.0, and um, I just want to read a quote of yours. You said PP 2.0 is concerned with how to bring out the best in individuals in society through dialectical principles of yin and yang in spite and because of the dark side of human existence. Now, look, I love it. I mean, I, I discovered your work um, through a textbook that I was um, uh, look, reading to prepare for my positive psychology course I was teaching at Penn. There was an introduction to positive psychology textbook where you were featured heavily in it. So first of all, the, the whole field's not against you, just so you know. I mean, you were in this whole textbook. You were featured, you know? And um, and I really liked your work. Uh, I really liked your work when I saw that. So um, if you could just elaborate a little bit on PP 2.0, that'd be great. Okay. This is very interesting. Okay. I've been saying again and again, but nobody listens. So I'm saying that it's impossible to have physical health without have the virus under control. We know that now, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how, how healthy you are. <laughs> you see your immune? No. You know, everybody can get sick, okay? So to get physically healthy, you need to have immunization. You need to pro- uh, protect your body against injury, against toxins. Okay? The same logic applies to mental health. You have Part of mental health or happiness, you have to protect the mind against trauma, uh, childhood trauma, against toxic relationships, against toxic positivity, against toxic emotions. So therefore, part of psychology to one say said that just focus on simply focusing on the positive is unrealistic. Not only unrealistic, it's harmful because I have so many clients are miserable because they want happiness and they can't get it. Right. They're miserable. Yeah. So this this sing, single-minded focus on positivity actually create people who are frustrated, or depressed, or anxious. True positivity is a light shining in the darkness. True positivity must take into account the misery impact in the world, the, the condition, the world condition, poverty, war, climate change, you know, as well as the dark side. Mm. That's why when I wrote that paper, I said, wow, this dark side, light side, that's great research. Oh, it's, not a story of, it's from Penn State. I said, oh, I said, uh, Marty must be. <laughs> Marty must be uh, have a, uh, a reverse experience uh, allow this kind of research. That is, is a, the dark side, light side. So I, I always tell people, I, you can't be happy if you don't know how to get along with your dark twin. Everybody has an evil twin. Okay? Sorry, say that again? Everybody has an evil twin. An evil what? what? Well, twins, 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 yeah, twins. They put, put two sides. Then they're two sides. I mean, twins, twins, twins. Yeah. Oh, twins! Do you think? Um, do you think uh, everyone has an evil side to them, though? Like, evil is a pretty strong word. Oh, no, dark side. Dark, dark side. side. Dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your bright side and dark side. 
you have the golden uh, golden shadow, your, your dark shadow. Yeah. Oh, you understand. So, so that's why I'm very excited about your research. I say, I didn't want, I say, I wish that, uh, I wish that uh, a scholar would go one step further, not study them as separately with separate correlates, but somehow to see how, how they, how, how different people treat these two, uh, uh, these two parts of them differently. Good people are able to transcend and integrate. Yes. They have more mental health, better mental health than people who fighting with a, with a divided self, polarized mind, fighting within themselves. Those guys deny the dark side with a worse life. So I say, uh, I say, oh, I wish, I wish God would go to the next step. You know, two, uh, the second wave of psychology asks for a completely different research strategy. That is, when you investigate any possible uh, variable or do any possible intervention, you have to factor in a, a covariant, a covariant of the dark side, the existential side. So that will give you a, a better picture because that people study past emotion, not emotion, but they issue it separately. And the here's question, a proper question. Why why you want one two? The dark side and the bright side, the two sides are either either additive of our is different algebra. It says in the old days, uh, Atkinson, the achievement motivation, saying that the net achievement is equal to approach minus avoidance. So I say, I can say you're wrong. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Who's right? Who's right in the field? <laughs> uh, 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 wrong. I say, you know, the, the, the best, the best lawyer, the best scientist, because they don't want to be failed. They work doubly hard. So, so in that case, if, if they are able to have a positive approach, adaptive approach to fear of failure, hmm. they were able to turn avoidance into doubly hard work to avoid that, to make sure the avoidance doesn't happen. And, and plus the motivation of the state. So if you, if, if, uh, uh, a, a person who incorporates the natural part and transform it will be stronger and happier and more achieving than people only focus on, on the positive side. Is that my whole point? I'm saying that you can achieve, you can be more creative, more resilient, more flourishing, if you factor in the dark side, make them work for you. Just, just some logic, right? You make it that you have lots of energy there. What is? Can you define the dark side for me? What? What? How do I know what's in my dark side? Oh, come on, you know your dark side. Greed. I know. <laughs> oh, greed, greed, greed. selfishness, narcissistic, okay. the sins. Believe? The deadly Manipula sins. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Manipulation, trying to use people as instrument. I see. I see. Rather, rather than treating people as people, you manipulate, use people. Yeah. And psychopath. Psychopath, you went to every one, you destroy anybody on your way to get ahead. The, the corporate leader, uh, politicians, mm. many of them are psychopath. They, they, they are very crazy people. But misguided, at uh, level, without about their 
think of the mis misguided motivation, misguided lifestyle. Mm. So that's why positive coupon zero means that you recognize that everything has downside and upside. If your dark side has your upside, has the, your dark side is very creative, a lot of energy. The so creative energy come from your dark side and your bright side, actually more from dark side. Mm. So if you are world dark side, then you're not going to be a writer. The dark side has a lot of brilliant ideas in how to, the criminal mind, you see? The, yeah. <laughs> the criminal yeah. mind is very smart. The criminal mind say, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. how can I get the most from this guy? Oh, a scam. There's a lot of scam, scam, scam artists. They're very yeah. smart yeah. people. You know, all, all the scam artists, the uh, constant scheme, the open schemes, they come with level creative stories to get your money. Uh, so the, the dark side, you know, you're able to ally with the dark side, ask them to help you to do good things. You're full ahead and only focus on the positive. That's the logic. But never listen to me. Well, I would push back on the, the the thing that no one's listening to you because there is a, there are there are a number of psychologists who are interested in this what what you call the second wave of positive psychology. Um, there was a book, uh, I think a book came out uh, a couple years ago on the second wave of positive psychology, and they you know were lauding you, lauding you, and uh, um, yeah, I'll see it so, so they, they are my friends, not like Tim Lomar, so all my exactly, friends. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm thinking that the old guy, you know, the 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 original group, you know, like mm. ten years ago, those guys are like the bunker mentality. You know, they 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 think that we are. I, I'm challenging their the, the empire, <laughs> the, the empire, man. And see, if the younger guys, oh, they feel like me. They say, oh. You know, much theory doesn't work with my students. You know, that's not, that's not unreal. You know? Because that's in Clinton years. Uh, peace and prosperity. But now we have 9-11, now we have pandemic. I mean, the, the, the March is like old stuff now. You know, it's the Clinton year. Of course, change. Before, you have the pictures. Now we have 5G iPhone. Um, the world has changed. So, um, I, what I'm trying to understand is this: there's a lot of similarities and differences between your approach and 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 and, and you know positive psychology 1.0, <laughs> as you would call it. Um, so, you've chosen virtue, meaning, resilience, and well-being as the core tenets of of uh, of of positive psychology 2.0. Is that right? Yeah, uh, they my old days. I I I become more. I become more, uh, more complicated than that. But anyway, so on every single issue, we have different assumptions. The assumption that true possibility, true positivity, include existential darkness. Now, also, you cannot look at the world through the binary either or mentality. So that's being silly. Mm. That's being silly. Because if your mind is big enough, you should be able to hold two ideas in two hands. You know, both ends. You know, like emotional options and bigger. You should have a heart big enough to hold two emotions. Your mind should be big enough to consider both views behind them. Both ideas might have something to offer, I'm sure. Rather than fighting each other by binary, so let's think about. I agree. Uh, it, like the dark side and bright side, both can contribute something to the, to the enterprise. I agree. Oh, I agree. oh boy, that will make you much more creative, more energetic. So the whole idea is that, like, like, like quantum transcendence, 
quantum uh, quantum thinking, a cat both alive and dead. Quantum computer is not binary. <laughs> it's a cluster thinking, system thinking. Right. Uh, so the whole idea is that well, our brain should be big enough to to feel comfortable to feel comfortable to holding two opposing ideas and feel comfortable. Yeah, both are something to offer. Then we have dialogue, we have internal dialogue. We have internal dialogue between your your heart, your mind. You have internal dialogue between your soul and your body. So, so that's how we grow. We grow through navigating a balance in a complex system. Yes. Is this is this your dual this is your dual system model of the good life that you're describing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean in Chinese term the yin yang, right? Yeah. Okay, that's one side. One side you're in trouble. So so the second part that that, that I don't agree, that you have to look at things. Because when you look at things, when your heart big enough to hold two emotions, uh all the pure relationship, like woman and man, all of them love hate together. No, no. Uh, <laughs> the teachers, student relationship, all of them they love hate. Okay? So relationship, uh, emotion, all tend to get kind of two complementary but opposite sides. Okay? Agreed. Yeah, no. But he is thin, thin, that's not the difference. So we talk about you got to involve in the dark part. You have six things for the dark part. The, the, the third thing is that to itself is is not good. Psychology in the sixties, self 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 psychology, self psychology only takes you so far because of my my friend David back and say it's not just agency, they're also communion. Community, yep. but I also yep. talk about the spirituality because behind the two agency and communion, the spirituality is a tripartite, tripartite model. The, the holistic approach to human being is that human being has both has a spiritual dimension, and more importantly, we are not a isolated individuals, closed in skins. We are all part of a human network. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, so therefore, a psychologist simply builds on I, as an agent, as a self contained, sufficient individual, that will result to what uh, the guy called the uh, years ago, uh, American psychologist called. Uh, the empty self. The empty self occur is because they too much focus on self and ignore the community, uh, the social values at the top of social interest, uh, community, the value of community, a neighborhood, and spiritual value. We sometimes, uh, you know, like, like, uh, uh, Jordan Peterson called about religious instinct. I mean, I, I call that a, a, a spiritual instinct. Yeah. You study culture. I say that Voltaire said that if they know God, they create God. Because in this horrible world, we can't survive without God. So I told many of my clients, they're from China, they don't believe in God. I say, I try you. I try to help you with all the psychology techniques that I know. You just can't beat addiction. You, you better <laughs> you better ask God to help you. I say you, you have to pray as if there's a God. Because currently speaking, I try everything. Yes, you still cannot put that put the addiction or just have a bad that habit. I am sorry, I, I I can't help you anymore. Mm. I want to pray for you. I mean, you can prove yourself. This is how I put question. I, I don't believe in God. Well, that's that's way. So I pray something happen. I pray something happen. Wow, I say, bro, that's magic. <laughs> <laughs> magic. 
I said, now I can help you. So therefore, when people discard spiritual values, Judeo Christian values, the whole Western civilization is in danger. They are no match to the Eastern civilization. The, the discipline, the hard work, the creativity, the Western civilization is no match. No match to, to the Asian civilization without what makes us strong is the Judeo Christian value of, of assign intrinsic value to individual life. Every individual matters. So that is that is the biggest contribution and also the Western value talk about the importance of of when it grace to fear forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big fear. Okay. That's a big one. Forgiveness Forgive- is a big one. So without forgiveness there's no relationship. Okay. It's also a negative positive okay, let's say without forgiveness then no, no, not possible to maintain the ownership. Mm-hmm. You have to forgive the bad stuff. You see? So in everything, that's so what I'm saying that you know, you know, person for you know, for us to flourish, we have to factor in not the agency, but community. Mm-hmm. We have to. So I have been, I've been doing a, a meetup group, you know. Trying to, get, trying to create community for years. You know, they have real self community and spirituality. This world is, the, the, the universe is full of wonders and uh, mysteries. Hmm. We don't know what black matter is, we don't know what dark hole is, we don't know what kind of what kind of power makes all the galaxies, all the stars moving in the in the orbit orderly? Okay? We don't know. The higher something is beyond our thinking. Call that God or call that cosmos, whatever you call it. So when you're in trouble, the idea that a that's, that's a, there's an unknown superpower can provide help. It's such a consolation. Give us such hope. That's why I said tragic optimism. Tragic optimism. Tragic is optimism. It's based on faith. Then all things fail. You are a minor, very three, three miles underground. Or you are floating in the ocean full of sharks, your little rubber boat. You better pray, man. You better pray. <laughs> Nobody can help you. So that's why I say you can't go through life without God. It's very difficult. Young man, you can't go through God. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't expecting a, a sermon. <laughs> So let me ask you about me. Your, uh, I just sort of uh, my last question for today because it's we're coming up on the hour. But I wanted. I really think during this time, a lot of people feel a great lack of meaning, um, and you're you're really the the guy to talk to about this. You know, you're the person to talk to about this. You created a meaning uh, th- uh, therapy. Is that right? A meaning centered form of therapy that was based on Viktor Frankl's work. Is that right? Integrative meaning therapy. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, usually people come, people ask me, say, how oh, I feel meaning? I say, being alive is meaning. Do you know that? Hmm. Think about that. Life is a gift that you're able to feel, touch, you're able to learn, and everybody's unique singularity. Meaning is that love life, Learning, growing, bearing fruit, the whole process, the theological, that, that every person is on earth, it can learn and grow and bear fruit. That's meaning. That's being yes. number one. Yes. You know, everybody can meaning for being alive. Do you know that? You know I that? agree. I agree. It's called, I love the idea of existential gratitude. 
yet. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Too soon. So, this first lesson I tell them, share with them. But today you're able to. I mean, many people are sick. Many people can walk. Now you're able to walk around. You're able to learn things. Wow, what a privilege. What a privilege. Think about that. If you, if you have a sense, just think about life itself is a miracle. That you are, you're part of a miracle. That being alive is a source of meaning, okay? The second thing, the second thing. You're alive, not, not, not only you're able to create, the Franco called that creative value, that the brain is a marvelous machine. You can, that little kid draw that picture. You can create music, create art. Uh, my little, and that little son is very scientific, able to create things, okay? A computer. Wow, that's amazing. Creativity is, is meaning. You create something for, for, with your life, with your effort. That is so much joy, so much richness. Creative meaning. Yes. yes. Like yourself yes. meaning, creativity meaning. And Yalom, Yalom, well, you know Yalom. Yalom said that, oh, life is, life is horrible, so, pain, so painful. But creativity, you're, you're able to create something with your life. That is, he said he wished he had my face, but he couldn't. Beyond his uh, scientific thinking, he cannot believe in God. He, he admired life by faith. Uh, but I said, but, but you have creativity. Okay? <laughs> so we, we, we should around all that. But anyway, so creativity, uh, one more thing, you not only can create things, but you're able to savor and appreciate all the beauties around you. Look, the sunset, sunrise, and the leaves change color over the season. I smell the fresh air, and little children play, I listen to beautiful music. Wow, we're living in a wonderful world. Yes. Even during war time, we were able to put our hands against a wall with a shadow that we're making, playing games. There's so many things to enjoy. You will continue to be depressed. I said, shame on you. Shame on you. You don't know how to appreciate all the things you already have. The mindfulness is about open your eyes to say, look, there, there, there are lots of wonders around this world. Life is beautiful. You, you know, garbage can is beautiful. Mm. The artist can make a beautiful painting. Suffering can be beautiful. Is that what you're saying? Oh, oh, oh. It's not being beautiful because it's cruel to be sad. It's cruel it, to be sad? It, it's cruel to be sad. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. To be sad. Uh, yes, I, uh, I'm a sad philosopher. A better than a happy pig. A sad philosopher means your life is depth. A happy pig is shallow. Nobody wants to be shallow. You want a meaningful life, it's a deep life. See that? No way to look at that. You know, meaningful life. Don't, don't, don't go for shallow life. Eat, drink, and, and be merry. That's a shallow life. Be a sad philosopher. Join my club. <laughs> Do you say tribe? Do you say join my tribe? Is that what you said? It's join my club to be sad. Say it again. Join, join my club. Join my club. Sad. Join my club. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I really like I, I really like that idea of um, depths of meaning. You know, the 1987 paper you wrote. Uh, with your colleague, yeah. Depths um, of meaning. Yeah. But, uh, let me just continue the source of meaning, okay? The creativity and experiential, okay? Now, what I can also say, the de defining attitude, that means courage. If you, you, you then, let's say you come to camp, you can't work, you can't enjoy things, but at least, you dare to rebel against your fate. Yes. Yes. You can kill my body, but you cannot destroy my soul. 
Okay. I will walk into my guest chamber with prayer in my heart, face on my lips. I die with dignity. I choose to die with dignity. With, my with what on di your lips? With what on your lips? A song in my lips. Praise. Praising God. Pray. Praise? Praising. Praising, Praising God. God. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. In my lips, okay? In my heart, okay. in my... In my in my prayer in my heart. Okay. 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 I, I, praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. So I'm saying that he said that, and all the all the central psychologists said that as a human being, our job is to rebel, rebel against fate, rebel against against all the de deterministic forces. It's to rebel against. All the determining forces, you feel free like a human being. That you're fighting against against the dark forces. You're alive. So therefore, you enjoy. That's why Sisyphus must be happy when he defied the gods, pushed the, pushed the rock on hill and rolled down. He said, "Fuck you all! I will continue to." To go, I enjoy my strength is stronger, stronger, stronger. I will not roll over and die. Yeah, yeah. Defiance is is it's happiness. Wow, wow. Doctor Wong, please don't change, don't change. Um, I have to uh, uh thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, but I also want you to know that I appreciate you. Um, I don't I don't ignore you. So I, know, I really appreciate you too. You are the you are, you are the uh, Maslow Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Maslow Junior. I love it. Well, um, I just uh, real real honor having you on my podcast today. Yes, we are on the same page. We we continue to work hard to put it put together. Okay, there's Absolutely. no human being passes. They all we're all the same. We're all human beings. Okay, exactly. Yeah, so so those, those labels divide. Okay, <laughs> labels divide. I agree. So, yeah, so I don't know how to call myself. I call myself as essential part of psychology because I'm dealing with essential issues. Yeah. But also, very yeah. positive. I believe in a better future. And I believe that people can change. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's I think, very much in line with the humanistic psychologists. And they're, 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 they were deeply influenced by the existential philosophers. Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk to you again. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dr. Wong. <laughs> we'll see you at the conference. Okay, see you at the conference. See you at the conference. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Psychology Podcast. If you'd like to react in some way to something you heard, I encourage you to join in the discussion at thepsychologypodcast.com. That's thepsychologypodcast.com. Also, if you'd prefer a completely ad-free experience, you can join us at patreon.com slash psychpodcast. Thanks for being such a great supporter of the show and tune in next time for more on the mind, brain, behavior, and creativity.